This is Ken Leone, Vice President of Marketing here at Stock Rover. In this video, we're going to cover the table, which is an incredibly powerful facility for comparing stocks and ETFs. The table is designed to help investors compare investment opportunities across many dimensions of financial, operational, and price performance. It uses a spreadsheet-like paradigm where the spreadsheet is pre-populated with lots of highly specialized financial data. To see the table, we first select a data set under My Collections. We can view the table either as part of all layouts or on its own. For our data set, we've selected the Warren Buffett Top 25 Portfolio. The table consists of rows and columns. The rows of the table come from the selected data set. Each data set contains a list of tickers. Data sets can be portfolios, watch lists, screener results, indices, or even your own ad hoc quotes list. Columns can contain any of the 700 plus financial, price, and operational metrics that Stock Rover maintains for each ticker. Each column represents a single metric. Depending on your subscription plan, you can also create and display your own custom metrics. The columns are grouped into views. Each view is comprised of a set of columns. Generally, the columns of a view are related by a theme, but they don't have to be. Here, we're looking at the current returns view. Out of the box, Stock River provides over 50 pre-built views. And there are even more views available for import from the investor library. Let's switch to a different view. We'll select basic valuation. Here we see a set of columns related to valuation. We have columns for price to earnings, price to book, price to sales, and other valuation metrics as well. We can easily customize the table so we can display a data set exactly in the way we want to see it. We can either click on the pull down next to a column name or right click on the column to expose a number of settings. To get an explanation of any column metric, simply select Explain. We can resize an individual column by clicking and dragging on the column border like this. Or we can use the left right arrows to fit all the columns into the current display. We can sort a column by clicking on the column header. Clicking on it again reverses the sort. To filter the table, hover over a column header, select the pull down, and select filter. We'll filter for a PE between 10 and 20. We see that there is now a filter icon and a box indicating the PE column is being filtered. We can apply multiple filters to the table. Let's filter price to sales. We'll filter for a value less than 1.7. We can remove a filter either by clicking on the filter box or clicking on the filter icon. Let's remove the price to sales filter. Let's switch to the fundamentals category and select the financial health view. Notice the PE filter remains even when we switch to another view. If the filter column is not part of the new view, as is the case here, it's added to the left. Let's clear the filter. Let's switch to the returns versus S&P 500 view. We can also right click on a row for configuration options. We can color the ticker. We can also tag a ticker. Tags are user defined keywords that we associate with each ticker. 
We can add comments to a ticker. Finally, we can add notes to a ticker, which are date and time stamped. Using multi-select, for example using control and shift keys, we can make changes to multiple rows simultaneously. I'll hold down the control key while clicking on individual rows to select multiple tickers to color. Let's clear the colors. When we go back to the column header pull-down, we see grouping options. We can group the rows by color, currency, industry, sector, and tag. Let's group by sector. To ungroup, simply select group by none. Let's switch to the profile view. Let's select the S&P 100. We'll go to World, and under Indices, we've selected the S&P 100. We can also add a column to a view. Let's browse. Let's go to the Price folder. We'll add Last Close. and price. Let's collapse the navigation pane. Let's color the price column for emphasis. Notice we can drag and drop columns to change the order. We can also remove columns. We can also perform a deeper dive with historical data. This will open up a new and highly functional historical data window. We can view the data in one of three formats, trailing 12 months, yearly, and quarterly. The bar chart has tooltips. We can also swap the rows and columns. Finally, we can print and export the contents of the table. One key feature of the table is to be able to display multiple data sets of the same type together, such as two or more portfolios. The concepts are applicable to screeners and watch lists too. To use this feature, we'll select our custom folder, but we can also click on Portfolios. Notice now the portfolios have checkboxes next to them. We'll select two portfolios. We now see Count and Portfolio columns. The count is the number of selected portfolios that include the ticker. Portfolios is a list of selected portfolios that include the ticker. There is also a tooltip that provides portfolio specific detail about the ticker. In the upper right, we can choose to display all the tickers for the selected portfolios, or selecting portfolios provides a summary of each portfolio and then across all portfolios. There's another kind of view called tiles, which display both tabular and graphical data together. A tile view will have the word tiles at the end of its view name. Here are just a few examples. We'll go to Profile and select Profile Tiles. Let's collapse the navigation pane. The tabular section is showing selected profile metrics. 
and the chart is showing the price change of the ticker and the S&P 500 benchmark. Tile views are highly configurable. We can display just the tabular data, just the chart, or both. We can configure the chart period. We can configure the size of the chart. We can configure the charts to all draw on the same scale. We can also edit the metric selection and chart type. Views are organized in categories using a folder structure. When we select Manage Views, we can change the folder structure. We can use these folders as is or modify them. For example, Selecting the pull-down or right-clicking next to the Analyst folder allows us to do things like rename or delete the folder. Clicking on Views, we can create a new folder. We can also drag and drop Views and Folders. I've created a folder called Favorites. Let's drag Dividend Detail to Favorites. We'll also grab Analyst Ratings. Remember, you can always drag and drop a view within a folder to reposition it. I'll leave the folder as is. Let's move the ETF and Funds folder down. When we select Portfolios and go to Views, we now see our Favorites folder is populated with our favorite views and that the ETF category has been moved down. Let's select Dividend Detail from Favorites. For more help on the table, select Help under your Stock Rover username. Then select the table. Here you'll find well-documented help organized by topic. I hope you found this video useful. I encourage you to explore Stock Rover and see all that it has to offer, as well as check out our educational videos on our website. Thank you for watching.